Hi, I'm John from Avid. In this session, I'm going to show you how to set up the Axiom Pro to work with Ableton Live. We'll look at how you can create your mix, navigate your session, and record new parts, all from the Axiom Pro. Now, I've already connected the Axiom Pro to my computer, so I'm just going to turn it on. And we'll launch live. And once that's loaded, we'll go to Preferences, and then go to the MIDI Sync tab. Now, the Axiom Pro is obviously a MIDI keyboard controller, but it can also function as a control surface using HyperControl, which is a software layer inside the Axiom Pro. To enable that, we'll just choose Axiom Pro from the control surfaces, and you may need to choose it from the input and output as well, depending on your operating system. And notice that the LCD updated just there to let us know that the control surface features are enabled. Now, we want to be able to play sounds from our keyboard controller and our pads, too. So what we're going to do is turn that on from the MIDI port section and put that away. And now live should be seeing some MIDI data, which we can see that it is from the MIDI in indicator. All right, let's get some loops into live so we can see how HyperControl lets you tweak your mix and navigate your session without having to go back to your QWERTY keyboard all the time. I'm just going to find some loops here. Yeah, that's good. That's not too busy. Let's find a little tops loop. Let's drag that in there. Okay. Now since HyperControl is active, our transport buttons are already mapped to Live's transport controls. Now depending on the program you use, those transport buttons do something a little different. In the case of Ableton Live, the loop button here on the left is set up to trigger the currently selected scene, like this. And the fast forward and rewind buttons are set up to advance or go back through your scenes, like this. Alright, let's add a bass line here. That'll work. Just gonna drag that in. And I'll use my loop to trigger that scene again. Let's turn that up. Okay, now HyperControl lets you work in several ways. In mixer mode, you have access to eight tracks at any one time from the top panel. Each slider controls a single track. And in this case, the first four sliders are the first four tracks in my session, and the next four sliders are assigned to the next four tracks in my session. If I had more than eight tracks, I could use the bank buttons and go back and forth between different tracks in groups of eight. Now below the sliders are eight buttons that let you select tracks. You can change their function by pressing the button below the ninth fader, and then the buttons will let you arm and mute and solo tracks. So using mutes, for example, you could drop parts in and out on the fly, like this. Now the encoders are also mapped to eight tracks at a time. Top four being mapped to the first four tracks of my session and the bottom four being mapped to the next four tracks in my session. Now you can control their function using the soft keys below the LCD. For example, if I press Send A, now I'm controlling the Send A amounts to the eight tracks in my session. If I press the Pan button below the LCD, now I'm controlling the Pan for each of my eight tracks. All right, you know, let's do a little session cleanup. I'm going to name my tracks real quick. Call this one Main Loop. This one Tops Loop. 
and this one base. And notice how the LCD updated with the names of my tracks. That's part of hyper control. It stays in sync with your session, so you can keep an eye on your tracks and you don't have to look at your computer. You can actually see that from the Axiom Pro. You can see I have the first four tracks on my left and the next four on the right. And it stays in sync even when I move it. So if I move the track over, it's gonna update and show me where that track lives. Now notice when I operate a slider, the screen automatically updates to show me all eight of my sliders in their relative position. If I grab an encoder, it's the same thing. The LCD updates to show me what I'm working with. Sometimes you might not want the screen to jump to the controller that you just touched. So for example, if you wanted to just keep an eye on the tracks in your session to keep things straight, if you're not looking at your computer screen, you're on stage or whatever, you can use the peak function, which is this combination key press right here, which lets you peek at those tracks lock that screen set in place by using the hold function. And now when I operate a slider, that screen is going to stay locked. I can change my parameters here. I can keep an eye on all eight tracks available. Alright, let's get back to our groove here. And let's add an electric piano part. Just gonna drag an EP onto my track. It's okay, but you know what? The sound needs a little bit of work. Just the solo button below the LCD. And I'm just going to go into Hyper Control's device mode. That's the mode you'd use to work with plugins where the encoders automatically map to plugin parameters. And you can go into device mode by pressing F1. And notice when I select the device, my LCD updates to show me all the parameters that I have available. In this case, all of the eight macros for this instrument. And notice I can switch back and forth just by hitting F1, go back and forth between mixer and device mode. And now that I'm in device mode, I'm just going to dial down some of that bell tone. It's kind of annoying. And turn up the overdrive a little bit. And let's widen that sound with a little bit more auto pan. Yeah, that's good there. Now I'm going to go back into mixer mode and add a little reverb, give it a little bit more space, Let's put a little delay on there. Let's hear how that sounds. Yeah, that's nice. Gives it good space. All right. I'm just going to go up here and record it as a clip. That's how easy it is. Record new parts, create your mix, and navigate your session.